Hello, everyone! Wait, oh, this is still muted. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of 10 Forward Weekly. Uh, I'm your host, uh, Mike Fadum, your community manager, also known as Ambassador Kel. Uh, and today, I am joined by ship artist Donnie Versaja and... <laughs> hey! And it's on, it's on record. Uh, and uh, the hands of... Uh, senior content designer Jesse Heinick. Let's take a look at them now. Everyone, look at Jesse's hands. It's great, super good. Uh, so before we get into what we're doing this week, which is the summer ship design stream that we've been doing for the last three weeks, uh, I am going to just hop over to the fan art screen here. Donnie and Jesse, can you see my camera? Yes. Okay. Cool. You can see what I'm doing. Great. Because uh, we got a bunch of cool. Um, uh, ship designs in this week, and I wanted to show them off to you. So first, uh, Dale Duke sent us his idea for a uh, Rysian science ship. Uh, it also looks very piratey. That's a lot of sails. Uh, in fact, I could see this being a uh, Fakiri ship, even. That's very cool. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Duncan Idaho has sent us some fan art as always. Uh, this is a tardigrade practicing social distancing. Thank you very much, Captain Tardigrade. Or Lieutenant Tardigrade, sorry. I didn't want to give him a promotion accidentally. Uh, this is Dot7 going on his own space odyssey. <laughs> and uh, this is, uh, of course, the Tardigrade pulling along Dot7 in their spaceship. They were. I'm so glad that short exists. I haven't watched it yet, but I'm so glad it exists. Meanwhile, Flamespire sent us uh, his take on a Federation vessel that he's been working on for a while. Uh, it's got... Um, Donnie, I know it's a similar design to a ship I've seen before, but I don't know what the ship is. Mm. Ooh, yes. Oh, yes, T6 Nova Wen. You're right. Here's another view of that same ship. Um, Donnie, just so you know, your typing is louder than things that are loud. <laughs> uh, uh, Goonie sent us these three pictures. Um, this is actually a super cool design. I like it a lot. Um, it reminds me a lot of the... the, the yeah, it, 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 it reminds me a lot of the, uh, the plane from Raiders. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that too. Yeah, I would fly the heck out of the ship. Yeah. So here's two more angles of that ship. That's the classic flying overhead shot. Love the rudder. Yeah, that's so nice. And this is, this is the back... Yeah, <laughs> We're just gonna. We're actually just gonna steal Goonies' design. No, we're not. Please don't. <laughs> yeah, I actually almost was like Jesse, don't look at this because I didn't want you to get inspired by how cool this ship is, uh, and then accidentally draw it. But okay, all right, good. Uh, Jason Smith has sent us uh, his take on Christian's ship from last week, which I think is a really cool version of that ship. I like how that looks. It does. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. All right, uh, Kotetsu Ryu sent us... Um, now, one of you guys who understands what 3D art is is going to have to help me out. This is half of a design that he's later going to Symmetry, I think. Um, but that's, uh, yeah, that's what he sent. It looks really cool. It will would look even cooler as its full self, but you can see I like the big giant engine on the bottom, and it's definitely got that, like, Woods Hole science boat thing going on. Ooh. <laughs> Space magic. Ooh, that's nice. All right, uh, and then last but not least, uh, Stu1701 sent us uh, some lo lovely shots 
of him looking fancy and mowing down aliens. Uh, this this actually has a really big tuxedo mask feel to me. <laughs> Look. <laughs> You're welcome. I saved the day. But you didn't do anything. Uh, and then this awesome shot of... Um, uh, I think that's the Kittimer? Looks like the Kittimer. Yeah. Ex assisting a, uh, a downed galaxy class. I think from the patrols we just did. All right. So... Let's dive into our purpose for being here this very evening or afternoon. What time of day is it? Where are we? I don't even know anymore. Uh, so, Johnny, does... We're trapped, trapped indoors. indoors. Time is um, irrelevant. It, before we... Thank you. Uh, oh, okay. Right, phone. 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 Quick, quick. We will watch Perfect. you do it uh, in real time. So, so go ahead, ahead and, 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 and talk, talk, okay. talk, 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 talk. Uh, Jesse, uh, tell us your greatest Star Trek theory in 10 seconds. My greatest Star Trek what? what? Oh, yeah. Can you hear me? That was super fast. Mm, the greatest, greatest Star, Star Trek theory. theory. Oh. oh, well, 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 said, hmm, as if we couldn't, but. We, uh, we could hear you just fine with the other headphones. Donnie, can you hear us now? Okay. I don't, I don't think, think so. so. He's, probably he's probably still, still going, going through. through. Oh, he's gone! <laughs> his, his, uh... Oh, there he is. Okay. <laughs> All right, so give me give me your give me your greatest <laughs> out there Star Trek theory, Jesse. While we're waiting, Gosh, we, need we need to, to, to captain that. that. Um, wow, wow, so nutty, nutty Star, Star Trek, Trek theories. Um, can you hear me? Okay, okay. All right. Screw okay. Right. we can hear you uh, with them as well. But, um, uh, All right. Okay. Uh, so, did Donnie, first things first. Uh, rising ships guess, and well, science well, ships. Theory. What, as a ship designer, would right. you be looking for? Uh, what advice would you give? Jesse, starting out this process. Um, I think that my keyboard is going to sound uh, loud again. Um, but definitely something nautical for Rising. Uh, something that looks like it is uh, part of a resort of some sort. Um, you know, the Rising Corvette we have is definitely looks like it's got the catamarans. It's, it's, um, it definitely looks like a boat. It's a spaceship. Um, right. It's got soft lines. It doesn't really have any hard edges, um, which is also, uh, you know, something to keep in mind. Uh, something that looks like a luxury yacht, I think, um, is what we want to go for. Uh, for a science vessel, um, let's see. Science vessel, we definitely want to have, like, um, like pods, like or something like that. To um, and it doesn't. Want, we don't want it to look threatening. First off, because it's a science vessel. Second, we want to. Look, we want it to have the soft kind of curves of an exploratory vessel that have some kind of mission pods on them, like extra sensors or something like that. Um, or I think we've had. I think what we say with Hector. Hector returns uses the phrase science balls. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, to have like floaty, like energy balls or something like that. Um, I think we've done that with a few ships before. Maybe something with a ring. You know, I think a ring would be really cool to add on this ship okay. since uh, that fits in with the nautical Rising theme and also kind of sciency. Um, and probably something more long than wide. I think uh, right. a longer ship rather than a wider ship. Um, okay. So yeah, that's just the basics. Um, Jesse, okay, okay. No, you are you aren't frozen. Your hands are just holding perfectly still. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. I do not have intention. Uh, uh, cool. Uh, so yeah, just for my own reference, I've put down some terrible little sketches here of the Corvette and the luxury cruiser, uh, so that we can sort of think a little about the rising and design aesthetic. There are certain things in in Star Trek Starship Engineering that are. Uh, mostly universal they don't always get adhered to but they're pretty common the idea of having your nacelles away from the the main ship hull to some degree um the corvette uh, i think is supposed to sort of evoke the idea that those the two sides of the uh the ship are are the nacelles that it's all engine it's you know the muscle car of spaceships um, whereas on the luxury cruiser, it's pretty obviously their little hydrofoils that are coming off of the sides there, or or at least it appears yes. similarly. One is um, for, and for most innocent strolls, one is for full gallops. 
Yeah. One of them, and, and another one of the, the common themes is that your ships usually have a main deflector of some sort so that you don't get annihilated by space dust. <laughs> um, and so those are, I think, things to keep in mind. But we're not necessarily following the Starfleet design principle of the saucer and the body and the warp engines, possibly a secondary hull, possibly not. Um, so with Donnie's notes in mind, I also did a little bit of homework and I looked up what science research vessels look like from a nautical theme. Um, and aside from uh, one very cool one that's a hydrofoil, oh, yeah, I saw that one. Uh, one of the, the, the things is that many of them look pretty front heavy. They, they're they loaded with a lot of like conning tower stuff and whatnot in front. They have a big four deck section. And then they have a bunch of science equipment in back, which could be a globe, it could be a crane, it could be various broadcast apparatus. And I think that sort of following that idea might be interesting. So with that and Donnie's comments in also, mind, I want to uh, commend start you on your bravery for drawing this shit in Sharpie. <laughs> uh, I, well, I wanted to make sure that it was visible on the camera. If I'm using like a, a thin little number five pencil, it's going to be totally invisible. Uh, this is also why I have multiple pieces uh, of paper yes. so I can start over. Um, so with that in mind, we want longer than wide... Um, and we want something that's a little bit front heavy. Uh, we want it to look kind of nautical. Um, and one of the things I was thinking was when I was looking at these science research vessels in, in the nautical world that are front heavy, I said to myself, okay, um, so they, they've got like the slim back end and the heavy front end. And what happens if we put some warp engines on that? And what happens if we put it in space? And, and it actually wound up, I felt looking cooler if I flip it upside down. And I'll send you a, a picture of some of the ones that I was looking at, and so we can discuss those later. And so what I was thinking was something like this. Oh, yes. I like, I like the long intro okay. leading into the reveal. Okay. Something kind of steamrunner-ish, where we have mm. a, a front section here that has kind of a, a raised area in the front and then a, an underslung area here that's that's coming down off of the bottom. Let me see if I can do a better side view for you here. So we have something like this. So you've got your front area here with its main deflector in the front. Um, we've got like this back area here where you can put one of your, your conning tower type things coming off of the the top of the... Uh, I really like that you're drawing both the front, the top and side views at the same time. That is that is neat. Oh, three quarter, yeah. Um, and uh, again, I apologize for my lack of, of artistic training here. Um, uh, and this, then we have watching this, the stream later. Uh, there is a drinking game. Every time Jesse apologizes, take a shot. There we go. <laughs> um, so let me chop this a little bit. I think this actually, well, no, that's okay because we want the rising stuff to look streamlined. We maybe want that curve to be a stronger curve like Ooh. that as opposed to a line. But actually, the, the thing um, that you've done there where it kind of looks like there's an indentation yeah. now. Of uh, like a little, right. little, almost like a built-in rudder on the bottom is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it could could look like it has a, a sort of a, a runner coming along the the underside there, so that you have on the the front. I don't know. I guess the front would have to be more like this, and then you have a a pretty strong sort of runner type thing here. That's neat. And then here, Ooh, uh, what would be cool is, is to have like a like a conning tower, um, yeah, jutting down from the bottom rather than the top. Ooh. So, so like, I was thinking that that would also be a very interesting sort of Star Warsian kind of thing, where yeah. we we take the can I say that? Wait, you've done it. Um, We're all fired. <laughs> okay, uh, where we take the the front shape, you know, here, and then. Uh, you have your, your main deflector here, but then behind it, you have all this sort of sensory apparatus. Oh, nice little, nice little greebly is coming off of it. That's, that's very greebly, and then behind it is that. So, 
um, and all of your bridge and assembly there. So side view would be kind of, you've got this kind of thing going on. That's cool. And we cut that up and then we have the thing going on there. Um, and then I imagine that the, the top area here has these very large windows from which you can see all around you. Um, much like the, the other science vessels that have the bubble. Now, I want to also talk about getting in that ring that you mentioned, Donnie. And mm -hmm. I was thinking that if this is going to be um, warp capable, it would it starts getting too busy if it's got both a ring and warp engines that come off of it. Um, sure. So we steal some Vulcan design and we just put a ring Ooh. around the back. And the spacing on this is probably off. Like, if you want to follow the golden rule, it's probably a little further back than, than that. But it's like that. We can even do, like, a crescent instead of a full ring, so where maybe it's open at the bottom. Um, oh, that's oh, an interesting yeah. idea, too, yes. Yeah. So, so, like, just taper off the two. I keep pointing at the screen, like you guys can see what I'm pointing at. Um, it, was, yeah. it would be lovely. Like that. Yeah, something like that. Maybe they, maybe they go down a little bit further, but uh, that could be a cool yeah. effects artist thing to do too, of having some sort of sciency something completing right. the ring, like a beam of energy or something like that. Right. Um, and I don't know how this is like affixed to the main body, possibly by some sort of spokes. I mean, maybe it's not. Come off a bit. Maybe it's What's not. That? Maybe it's uh, it's floating freely it just floats through there? magnetism or uh, repulsor. No, repulsor is Star Wars. I didn't say that. No one said that. <laughs> um, okay. If um, if you wanted to get uh, a little bit goofy with it, you could put like some sort of a a, a, a giant globe behind the, the bridge here. But again, I think that starts getting a little too busy. Yeah. And that also uh, obstructs one of the things that we want to deal with, which is that the this thing is not your speed racer type yeah. ship, even though it's got that kind of long catamaran style. And so I think that the impulse engines are actually here on the back end of the, the front half. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. So the Just like they are on the saucer of Akani. So the big right. front engine here that's all got the mass has the impulse engines built into it. And then this aft section, this is all extra stabilizers and research pods and things like that. We can even greeble up this area a little bit with some more of those sort of communication spokes and things well, of that's that really nature. Cool. And of course, a, a giant um, for, for keeping the drag down in yeah, space. Yeah, it, it has to have the spoiler. Yeah. I mean, the spoiler could be, could be enormous if you really want. <laughs> That might be too much with the ring and split. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely don't think we should have... If we do the ring, we shouldn't do the science balls. I think having too many round elements would, would throw off the design. Yeah. Um, I think either or, but I like the impulse engine right there where you put it. Um, right. I think that's really cool. Yeah. Um, so, let me grab another fresh piece Sounds of paper. Good. I've, uh, I've flipped your camera angle so that we're all looking at the paper correctly on the, on the stream. Uh, but uh, ah. it's also because of the way that everything is angled, giving it the impression that we're, we're about to fall about 200 feet onto your table at any moment. That's <laughs> awesome. Uh, please okay. don't. I promise I won't um, fall into the internet and land in your house, Jesse. I'll do my okay. best anyway. Were you planning on actually I drinking the Trump, Earl Grey, you. or was that just there for flavor? Uh, it's actually on my desk. Uh, okay. Uh, I legitimately drink Earl Grey tea and many other teas. Yeah. Uh, a man of uh, your hairdo on a Star Trek game, if you didn't drink Earl Grey tea, we'd have to throw you out. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for... Danny, that. I don't know if you saw it the correct today, camera. but um, somebody made a um, Wrath of Khan uniform for Animal Crossing. Oh, amazing. 
All right. So tell us what you're doing, Jesse. Talk us through it. So I'm sort of doing a, a, a new take on this shape that we've been working on, where we have the, the 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 long sort of catamaran here at the back end, and the impulse engines are here, um, and we got some greeblies coming off the bottom for comm and sensor arrays. You've got your recessed uh, kind of main deflector dish in the front here, um, and then uh, this is you know your double hull catamaran stuff here. Um, with the, the small ricey and spoiler in the back. But if we didn't go with the ring, we could go more NX01-ish and do something where we have engines that come off of it more in your conventional oh, sort of okay. Fed-like way. I wonder now, if that's making it too much of a federation ship at that point. It, it becomes very fetty when you do yeah. this. Um, uh, it does give us the opportunity to use more globe type elements if we wanted to in order to sort of break up some of these lines. So, for instance, we could have a globe that's in the middle of the, the catamaran here. Um, that... I had a, another sheet that I had just gotten out so that we could play all this rigmarole. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and this might make things a little bit different if it catamarans back from whatever the front is. It'll be super quick here. And then there's a research globe right in the middle of it here. And then you have your your engines that are supported in some fashion. But it is very fed sort of yeah. saucer like front and and whatnot. So probably not the best direction to go. I really like I mean I, I like what we're I keep pointing to the screen. But that that design right there, that top down view that you've got going on, I think yeah. is really good. Right. Um, and I, I think adding engines to the catamarans would makes it too busy. I think the catamarans just need to have the nacelles built into them. Yeah. Um, or the so that's cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you could do a little tiny cutouts on the Corvette. side just to show the uh, the sard collectors right. or whatever they're called. Yeah, that that looks really well. You can have the heat exchangers just built right in to the sides here, like so. I don't know if that blue is visible. It is. Um, this uh, top area on the, the front here, so there's the underside. This probably could stand to be a little bigger, and it needs to be less angular. This needs to be very curved. It should have lots of, of open view space yeah. on it. Um, what I like about this too is that it's even though it's a science vessel and it's very obviously a science vessel, that front shape you've drawn is very sports car, uh, which still fits rising. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it should be it should be a little bit styling, yeah. just you know, because the Rysians are like, if you're not going to do it in style, yeah. then what are you doing? You got to spend a lot of money, a lot of your uh, money on this. <laughs> Cash is always a welcome gift. <laughs> I. Botched that line. That's all right. Yes, I, I don't saying. know it well enough to quote it correctly either. So, yeah, I've only seen the episode once. So, um, uh, let's see. Other recommendations, Donnie? I'm, I honestly, I, I, I really like that. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm having second so, thoughts about the ring. Um, okay. I'm just not sure if it flows well with the design. Do you um, want to try and draw it without the ring and with the bigger spoiler and see what that looks like? So we have it to compare from that same view, I mean? Yeah, I think that would be good. Okay, let's try that. Let me get the, the basic model out. If I were not a Luddite, I would be doing this on a tablet using Photoshop so we could just put everything in layers. And that would be lovely, but change stuff we for fishes. But... You know, there yeah. is a tablet sitting in the streaming room that's currently being used honest. right now for exactly that purpose. Oh, I, I have a tablet right here, <laughs> but I don't know how to use it. And, uh, yeah. 
I don't have any software like yeah. that. So all of those things are potential blockers. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Knocked a whole bunch of stuff over, so that's great. Um, all right, so we've got our front sort of sporty design, um, and uh, it goes back to the, the catamaran shape. You know, I'm not doing a very good job of copying my own work, but. We will make it work, because that's what we do. We're professionals. Um, OK, um, so if we get rid of the ring, um, what do we want to do to the back here? Do you want to put in like an enormous sort of spoiler that goes over the back central area here? Uh, that's mm -hmm. So it looks almost, almost like a sun canopy sort of thing. What do you think, Donnie? Yeah, let's try it. All right. So put this in here. Actually, let's reverse that angle on those curves there. Make the sides curve inward a little bit. So that we get... Something more like that. I think if you, you see where that that little darkened V is under on the other side. You did you did just a second ago. He's uh, here. No, up here, right there. I think that would be a good spot to have like the bussards for the nacelles underneath. Okay. Yes. That's really cool. Yeah. cool. yeah. I almost wonder if the spoiler would be better if it uh, ended flush with the back of the boat. So it comes down? Not down, just so, like, instead of having, you know, I, I, I'm trying to gesture to my screen, too. Uh, you can see how, you know, where the spoiler ends and then where the back of the boat ends, there's not, there's a little bit of a gap. I wonder if it would look better if it came all the way back. Oh, so it covers all the way no, to the no, front No, 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 all here. the way the other way. The other way, all the way yeah, back here. It doesn't have to go that far, but yeah. Just, yeah. Okay. You like big boats and you I cannot buy it. So, so, something like that. <clears throat> yeah. <coughs> Becomes a big old canopy. Um, if we do that, then I kind of want to wait a little bit of the, the front here by, in addition to having these greeblies coming off of the, the bottom here, put some behind the, the bridge area on the top yeah, as well. So you cool. have them right I kind of feel here. like a science ship that isn't a sleek Federation ship should be just covered in greeblies anyway. Yeah. A little worried that too much greebly gets away from the uh, Roxian. Yeah. That's true. So. Oh, that's true. Um, what if we replace these greeblies instead with more dome type structures. Yes, I think that would yeah. be better. So, so you've got yeah, like a large central dome maybe, and two smaller ones on on either side of it. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you can turn the domes jutting. They don't have to rest inside that, but they could jut out into that little ne negative space. Oh, here. Yeah, like, like, like half of it is on the ship and half of it is jutting out of that right. main dome. So it's yeah, something like that. That's there fine. we go. Yeah. So this is actually going more like that, and then one large central dome oh, yeah, there. Yeah, that's cool. 
Yeah, interesting. Um, oh, and if we do the, the really large parasail like this, obviously, secondary. Ah, collector. coming off the parasail. I like that. Yeah. All right. Donnie, your thoughts, monsieur. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that looks like a... Uh... I can't decide whether or not I like that big spoiler or I like the ram better. <laughs> um, it definitely, the big spoiler definitely gives it a folk feeling. Yeah. Well, yeah, we got um, both of them. That spoiler could be like a sensor platform. Yeah. So we'll put some solar collectors on the top too. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could decorate up the, sen the the spoiler in all kinds of ways. Like you could have antennas coming out of the sides if you wanted to to create some interesting lines that are perpendicular to the lines of motion. Or you could put uh, some more of those domes on the underside of it. So yeah. if we're looking at the underside of the ship, we've got you know your your basic uh, steam runner ish profile. And then you have uh, the, the spoiler going over here. And we have domes on the bottom. Oh, yeah. What that look like from the side? Ugh, perspective drawing. <laughs> You're doing a good it. job with it, though. So... You got that coming off, and then down here is the good lizard. The catamaran sort of hull section. I like that. Yeah, the, I'm looking at the luxury cruiser, and it's got that tower underneath. Yeah. Um, I think if we, I think you could move that, you, use something that similar shape, but move it to the front, and mm -hmm. flowing backwards instead of forwards, I think would be good. Uh, so, like, on that side view there. Oh, yeah, I see what you're talking um, about. Coming off the front bit of the boat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the the bit that looks like it's small rings on the underside? or No, the, the bit behind that. Oh, the thing behind the big yeah, the um, fin. fin. Yeah. I think, I think okay. having the fin, like, on that side view right there. Yeah, yeah. on that. Move it to the yeah. front. Uh -huh. The front of the ship and have it coming down and sweep backwards. So like starting here, starting at the the diagonal line, going backwards, or or replacing the greebles yeah. here. Yeah, replacing the greebles, but start it okay. start it a little bit more forward. Yeah, or about halfway up that arc. Okay. Yeah, then then draw it like a diagonal down. Okay. Just keep and then like Scott. It's got a rectangular section that comes off of it there. So, um, and then it's very rounded. Something. I don't. I don't, I don't no, I want it to like. Hmm. Sorry. Nope. Take like, a shot. Draw it like coming down, like underneath the ship, um, like jutting out. Go okay. right where you are. Sure. And like continue that diagonal down. Mm -hmm. Keep going. All right. How yeah, far do you want to go? About right there. Now draw a okay. line going back, a straight line going back. Okay. From that, yeah. Now, now, like do like a arc from that, the end of that line up to the ship again. Uh, do you want to be concave or convex? Uh, going forward. Uh, that, so the straight that angle line, not about Jesse. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, and then have it curve back into the there. Lake. Have it curve back into the ship. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Neat. yeah, yeah. Right. That's that's a very interesting ice cutter that yeah. uh, turns this into a, a weirdly handled disruption. <laughs> and then to balance that out, you could have some smaller fins coming off of the the mm -hmm. bottom, 
Um, so at the end of the catamaran. No, 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 no that's, that's too far. But well, that's actually, that, cool. that doesn't look too bad. Ha ha ha! Take that. Yeah, I was, I was thinking something, some shallower fins, I guess. Okay. Um, one on each catamaran. Um, sure. So, so um, something more like. Uh, no, 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 no. Like, nope. just, just two, two lines. Um, ah. Just like that sort of thing. Yeah, but further back and then right. longer. Right. Okay. So <laughs> we're filling up the paper quickly. I've yes. got more. Stuff yes. Like yes. that. Okay. So this is basically like the fins that are on the refit Connie. Yeah. Okay. You have more pronounced, but yeah. Very yeah. cool. So how are we feeling about this, Jesse? What are you What are you leaning towards as the ship's designer? Um, well, I think that that our starting principles have given us a really interesting design by making it sort of forward heavy in front, uh, following the Ricean catamaran sort of ethic along with the sail. Um, I think I personally like the sail more than the ring, um, but the ring could certainly be really visually distinctive, and it definitely fits the sort of science feeling, much like the Vulcan ships. Well, do. since you're the designer, um, let's go with what you like. <laughs> I, I think we should. I think we should ditch the ring and go with the uh, the sail. Sail. Okay. All right. So, do you think uh, that, based on on this, Donnie, do you think that we should make the front wider? Or do you like it being more kind of sleek and more like a uh, wider? I think we could get away with making it wider, yeah. Yeah, I'm inclined okay. to uh, agree. Jesse, do me a favor. So, Put your hand up towards your weapon. Yeah. Never mind, it fixed itself. It went out of focus for a second. Oh, camera yeah. focus. Okay, so. We got our. Oops. <coughs> All right. One idea that, that I thought about but I discarded was uh, <coughs> thinking about. The catamarans themselves, what if they they weren't parallel, but they joined in the back in sort of a V-shape, or if they were splayed outward, or if they were slightly curved? I don't know. Maybe too much to, to go on. I definitely don't think they should they should meet. Um, I think I like what we got going on. I think they should be parallel. Yeah. All right. So... Yeah, I like that better. That's nice. Yeah. And then this section, of course, is all like got a bunch of glass, observational windows, and whatnot. You get the domes in the back here. These are the science domes, not Hamato's domes. Right. Um, and there have to be three of them, or we are going to get boob jokes for <laughs> days. Uh, got the sail. Uh, Donnie, do you think that the sail should be um, curved inward or curved outward or just parallel to the rest of the ship? Um. Think if curved outward, I think. I wasn't thinking much the same because it sort of gives the impression of a blade as yeah. it's moving. It's like this thing is cutting through yeah, space. That's nice. Cut through all your <laughs> friends. Um, uh oh. Heinig's back on his stuff. <laughs> uh, oh, and no, we decided that the sale actually is occluding. The, the underside there. Yeah. So kind of wish I had some whiteout. Um, <laughs> and then there's a whole bunch of stuff coming off of the underside here. Um, and then the sail itself has those domes of its own on the underside like that. Yeah. Um, okay. Side view. Um, yeah. If we're going to curve that like the Connie, then, then, uh, we're actually going to take out that curve 
and replace it with the much larger sort of fins. That. Great. Then we have the, the big sort of ice cutter in front. There's a lot of cutting edge sort of stuff going yeah. on on this thing. You can make jokes about cutting edge science. I you're guess. also uh, you're um, breaking through the uh, Rhysian barrier. Yeah. <laughs> right. The, the Great Rhysian Space yeah, Reef. Yeah, the relaxation barrier. <laughs> yeah. Something we're all experiencing a lot of right now. <laughs> Dome there and the great sail there with its own underside domes as well in the front. And then I know technically the uh, the heat sinks on the warp engine are only supposed to light up blue on the inside, but screw it. <laughs> It looks cool, therefore we'll do it and we'll explain science reasons for it later. And our impulse engine is underneath here in the front. Uh, woo, marked my hand up something right. good there. Fortunately, we're all washing our hands multiple times yes. a day now. Um, put a couple uh, antennas there just for funsies. Um, uh, one other question I have for you, Donnie. Uh, where on this design is the shuttle bay? Hmm. Um, it could be in the back of the, above the globes. Um, okay. In the back of that, that curious to go so up. It could be right here then. It could also yeah. be at the bottom of that giant fin. It could be an interesting place to stick a shuttle bay, depending on how big the fin is. No, the, the big one in the front. This yeah. here. That's an interesting idea. I, I don't ex imagine this being really yeah. thick. Um, I, I imagined it being uh, need to be kind of rounded, but I want it to be sort of like those you know, parentheses <laughs> that are sharper at the top yeah. than at the bottom. Uh, and then this has that business. And then you have your, your sort of cutting oh, fin, yeah. just like the... Uh, be, oh, excuse me. Probably a little too small to have a shuttle bay in it then. Right, but it could be on the underside here. This yeah, area we're going to suggest that too. Be right there. Oh. Main deflector. Yeah. Oh, and right, we have a secondary deflector here on this guy. Ah, you like how I made that I perspective? Do. It's very nice. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So how are we feeling about this, Jesse? Do you like this, or do you have other iterations you want to put on it? I think I think this is a design that is kind of I interesting. We we went somewhere <laughs> with it. Where we wound up, I don't know, but we definitely went somewhere. Donnie, what are you thinking? Yeah, I think we're at a good spot. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, Jesse, what I would love Fantastic. for you to do uh, is send me a picture of that and also your other two pages, just in case we need them for something. Um, but also mark up your clean drawing with just some little, like, here's where the secondary deflector yeah, is. Here's where the, just so, you know, when people are looking at it and when Hector's looking at it. Uh, but great. Yeah. Sweet. Well, that is a really nice ship, and I like how it looks. Fantastic. Thank you guys for, uh, for going on this right. journey with me. <laughs> Thank you so much. Glad to be here. All right. Uh, normal, we would do right. an outro, but we're just recording. So thanks, folks. And uh, we'll see you next week for the final one of these with next Jonathan Perlosh and uh, uh, possibly Hector Ortiz. And uh, then we'll, we'll let you vote and turn one of these into the summer ship. We'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.